Good morning. Welcome to our service of morning prayer. Hopefully my voice is going to hold up this morning. Let's see. Today the church remembers the lives and ministries of two men. <clears throat> first of whom is Paulinus. Well, there you go, the uh, Mercians once again get a little, uh, <laughs> a little bit of bad press. Our second person the church remembers this morning, or this day, in fact, is Thomas Traherne. Thomas is a bit of a hero of mine. I have some of his poetry on my shelf and I rather like him. Hey ho. Blessed be you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, <laughs> open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 71 In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness rescue me and deliver me. 
turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendour all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him. For no one will rescue him. Do not be far from me, my God, come quickly, God, to help me. My accusers perish in shame, may those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. As for me, I will always have hope, I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long, though I know not how to relate them all. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, Sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvellous deeds. Even when I am old and grey, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth you will again bring me up. You will increase my honour and comfort me once more. I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing praise to you with the lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, I whom you have delivered. My tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long, for those who wanted to harm me have been put to shame and confusion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. 1 Kings chapter 21 Some time later there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the place of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, Let me have your vineyard to use as for a vegetable garden, since it's close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard, or if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it's worth. But Naboth replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. So Ahab went home, sullen and angry, because Naboth the Jezreelite had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my ancestors. He lay on his bed, sulking, and refused to eat. His wife Jezebel came in and asked him, Why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, because I said to Naboth the Jezreelite, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I'll give you another vineyard in its place. But he said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel, his wife, said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, 
and sent them to the elders and the nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting, and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people. But seat two scoundrels opposite him, and have them bring charges that he has cursed both God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth City did as Jezebel directed in the letters she'd written to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth in a prominent place among the people. Then two scoundrels came and sat opposite him and brought charges against Naboth before the people, saying, Naboth has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent word to Jezebel, Naboth has been stoned to death. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you. He's no longer alive, but dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of Naboth's vineyard. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, Go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He's now in Naboth's vineyard, where he's gone to take possession of it. Say to him, This is what the Lord says. Have you not murdered a man and seized his property? Then say to him, This is what the Lord says. In the place where your dogs licked up Naboth's blood, dogs will lick up your blood. Yes, yours. Ahab said to Elijah, So you found me, my enemy. I have found you, he answered, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. He says, I'm going to bring disaster on you. I will wipe out your descendants and cut off from Ahab, every last male in Israel, slave or free. I'll make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like that of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because you have aroused my anger and have caused Israel to sin. Also concerning Jezebel, the Lord says, Dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Dogs will eat those belonging to Ahab who die in the city, and the birds will feed on those who die in the country. There was never anyone like Ahab who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel his wife. He behaved in the vilest manner by going out after idols like the Amorites the Lord drove out before Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and fasted. He lay in sackcloth and went around meekly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you noticed how Elijah, uh, Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he's humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his day, but I will bring it on his house in the days of his son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. <clears throat> Make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways, 
and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations, and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. As the soldiers, Acts, sorry, Acts 21, verse 37 to Acts 22, verse 21. As the soldiers were about to take Paul into the barracks, he asked the commander, May I say something to you? Do you speak Greek, he replied, aren't you? The Egyptian who started a revolt and led 4,000 terrorists out into the wilderness some time ago. Paul answered, I'm a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia. I know a citizen of no ordinary city. Please let me speak to the people. After receiving the commander's permission, Paul stood at the steps and motioned to the crowd. When they were all silent, he said to them in Aramaic, Brothers and sisters, listen now to my defence. When they heard him speak to them in Aramaic, they became very quiet. And Paul said, I'm a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city. I studied under Gamaliel, and I was thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. I was just as zealous for God as any of you are today. I persecuted the followers of this way to their death arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison, as the high priests and all the council can themselves testify. I even obtained letters from them to their associates in Damascus and went there to bring these people as prisoners to Jerusalem to be punished. About noon, as I came near Damascus, suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting, he replied. My companions saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of him who was speaking to me. What shall I do, Lord? I asked. Get up, the Lord said, and go into Damascus. There you will be told all that you have been assigned to do. My companions led me by the hand into Damascus, and because the brilliance of the light had blinded me. A man named Ananias came to see me. He was a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews living there. He stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, receive your spirit. And at that very moment I was able to see him. Then he said, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear words from his mouth. You will be witnesses to all people of what you have seen and heard. And now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptised and wash your sins away, calling on his name. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord speaking to me. Quick, he said, leave Jerusalem immediately, because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. Lord, I replied, these people know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I stood there giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then the Lord said to me, Go, 
I will send you far away to the Gentiles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. Father, on this still, bright morning, we come before you and give you thanks for all this day will hold for the people, the places, the things that will touch us, and for the people we will engage with and we pray be a blessing to. Lord, take this day, consecrate it and us to your service, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world as news headlines speak of Russian shelling of cities across Ukraine as an act of reprisals against Ukraine for blowing up the bridge that links Russia to Crimea and an act that if indeed it is Ukraine having done is not terrorism for there is conflict between the two nations, but actually common sense in stopping the route for road traffic and for supplies and troops by rail to enter in to their territories. And as Russia continues to see the towns it's taken fall and be retaken, as Russia continues to threaten nuclear weapon use. Father, we pray that justice and truth might be seen in Russia and that the people may see what their leader has made them, a pariah to so many people and nations. And we pray for the places of the world with conflict. We pray for the struggles 
in so many places this day of governments that are overthrown and run now by military or other forces. We pray for Somalia and Ethiopia and for the conflict with Tigray and Eritrea and <coughs> for Uganda and Ebola cases continuing. We pray for the people of this day in Nigeria where so many people have died in a boat accident. <coughs> we pray for those who mourn this day. We pray, Lord, for unity within nations, for good governance to the inhabitants of each nation, and for peace between the nations. Lord, touch this world of ours. Be all that you are in the lives of the government leaders and the politicians. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we pray for the church and its <coughs> oh, many, many facets, for its many views, its many beliefs, all that church is seen to be, we pray, as reports and assessments into historic abuse within the Church of England are made more public and discussed more openly. We pray for the church and its witness and its acts and its integrity. And we, Lord, pray for the people on our hearts and minds. We pray for our friends and our families, our church members, our neighbours and our communities. And Lord, we pray this morning for the Bennett family, and for the Peace family, for the Palmers and the Mackenzies, for the Mitchells and the Cotterells, for the Holmeses and the Hattons, for the Palings and the Gibbards, the Sanfords, and for Philip Hope, and for Pat Watmore and his family, for Jill Williams and her needs, for the Popovs, for Elaine Turvey and for the joy of Emily and sometimes I'm sure the pressure as we all have of caring for older family members as she does for Olive. We pray for her and the whole family with their care of her. And we pray, Lord, for Caroline and William and for Linda and Alan, for Charles and for Norma and for Maureen and for Colin as the next stage of his care plan unfolds. We pray for Beryl and for Val, Sylvia and Ray, for Sheila and Karen, for Norman and Beryl, for Richard Fox and his family, for Joan and Alan, for Estherline, for Angela and Butler from Butler, Buster, my brain's going, Angela and Buster, for Molly and Heather, for Enid and Barbara and Terry, for Derek Jones and Stan Parry, John Hambridge and Morris Price. We pray for Jane and her continued recovery after her brain bleed, for the Bradshaw family and especially for Ruth. We pray for Amy and for all we know who suffer the challenges that are dementia, for Emma and Rebecca and their long Covid, for Vicky and son Josh as he recovers from illness, for the Iddens and their Josh and Belle, for Harry and Damien, for Richard and Amanda and for their family and their needs, for Katie and her family and for Ignatius. We pray for Timon and Helen, for Poppy and Elliot, for Charlotte and Ryan and all we know who are pregnant at this time. We pray for Olive, Mo and Wendy in their loss as they continue to remember those who love and gone before. And we pray for all who mourn this day. 
and to those names we lift of the Lord those on our hearts and minds also. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Saviour, who sent Paul in us to preach and to baptise, and so build up your church in this land, grant that, inspired by his example, we may tell all the world of your truth, that with him we may receive the reward you prepare for all your faithful servants. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And with the words our Saviour gave us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Thank you for being with us this morning. Sorry I'm a bit croaky and coffee. It was a cold night out on the streets on Saturday night. <laughs> but worth every moment to take God's love on the streets. Take care, guys. Be blessed. Stay safe and we'll catch you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>